Good morning everyone. I hope you've had a good morning so far. Um, welcome to our first ever online Sunday celebration um, brought to you, to your living rooms from our living room. Isn't it nice that we can meet together even if we're not in the same place that we meet at the same time and it's good that God is outside of time and space and that he's been always here and he's he will be here right to the end of time and that he's everywhere so he's with you now in your in your house wherever you are watching this from wherever you're joining in and he is he's there and he knows how we're feeling and he's got his whole world in his hand and that is awesome yeah my name is Marcus I'm one of the leaders in in our church and yeah wherever wherever you are watching this from um, please join in. Please don't just watch, but please join in with, with the worship and with the prayers. And later Graham will be on and he will share some thoughts. And yeah, and I have to confess that um, we are time traveling in. So um, we say hi from Saturday evening and on Sunday morning we'll join in with everyone and worship, worshiping along to our, to our own songs and to pray with us together. That's right. So we'll do three things. We will we will worship together and pray together, and then we'll hear a few words from Graham, and then um, third we will encourage everyone to call someone, someone else from church, who will also have watched this, and and to pray together for each other and to to speak together about what we've heard and what spoke to us and and to to pray together for each other and for for the church and for everyone. In our, in our country and around the globe. That's right. And now I hand over to Leah, who will lead us in worship today. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Um, yeah, so I was thinking about worship um, and what we could do with one another in our, in our living rooms, all spread out around the town. I thought that actually it's sometimes it's easy to focus on the situation that we're in, especially when we're facing something like this coronavirus. And actually, particularly in times like these, it's important to be focusing on God. Um, so that's what we want to do this morning. Focus on God together, focus on worshipping Him, focusing on His goodness and His blessings. He is worthy of our praise, He's worthy of our worship, um, He's worthy of our focus. So let's praise Him together, let's sing together. Number 74, let everything that has breath. Good morning, God. Good morning. Thank you that you're here. Thank you that you're with us. Thank you that we can worship you this morning. Thank you that you love us. Thank you that you are worthy, worthy of all of our praise. Your 
the good times and in the bad times. Thank you, thank you that even when we're struggling to trust you, that you care for us. Thank you that you're our rock in times of trouble. You're our lighthouse in the storm, guiding us along safe paths. God, you are our lighthouse and we thank you. We thank you for being our rock. Thank you that we can come to you. We can follow your guidance, Lord.
he never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God feel like they can sing of the goodness of God but I know I, I do and I there are so many times in my life that I can think back to where stuff was difficult or stuff was challenging or maybe I made mistakes and got stuff wrong but but you were good to me God I thank you that you've you've been so good to me and I can look back on my life and I can see your hand at work God you've been there for us through good times and bad times, for us as a family, for us as a church, for me as a person. God, I thank you that 
you know, I've come up to our last song and, and this last song is, is one that's been handed down over the centuries. The Lord's my shepherd, it's a song that, that David wrote, it's, it's a psalm out of the Bible, Psalm 23, and, and it reminds us of, of how much you care for us, God, that you see us as um, like a shepherd sees his sheep, you care for us in the same way. No matter what we need, what dangers we face, you are always there with us, guiding us, protecting us with your rod and your staff, you are there. God, and as we sing the chorus, I will trust in you alone. Lord God, I pray that you would remind us that you are trustworthy. God, I pray that you would help faith to grow in our hearts as we sing it. Grow our faith in these challenging times. Help us to see your hand at work in our lives right now. And God, yeah, I just I pray that our this faith that you grow in us will will grow into into a lighthouse that shines for all the world to see, that our neighbours will see that we have faith in you, that we that we're not fearful because we trust in you. God, I pray that good things will come out of this situation, that people will come to know you through this situation. God, we pray that you would be king in our hearts, kings and king in our lives. And God, that we would see you as the, the good shepherd that you are. That we would learn to trust you more. Trust in the God who's been faithful for all this time already and will continue to be faithful and trustworthy. Amen.
Father, I thank you that you lead us and that you guide us, Jesus, no matter if we go through through green pasture and through to fresh rivers or if we feel like in the dark valley. Father, thank you that we can know that you, like a good shepherd, always guide us, that you protect us, that we can hear your voice. Your word says that we can recognize your voice. And we thank you that that's true, that we can go and into every day and know that our Good Shepherd is leading us and that we can listen to him and that we can hear his voice guiding us in our lives, Jesus. And yeah, Father, I pray for the um, for this next time, Father, for for the next five, six minutes that when, when Graham is speaking, Jesus, I pray that that we um, that we hear Graham speak but that we hear your voice speaking in our hearts, Jesus. Father, Hallelujah. Amen. Good morning. It's great to speak with you on this Sunday morning, even in a strange way. We can still be church together. And uh, I'm going to share a few thoughts with you. We're thinking in church about walking with God. And uh, this is part of our deeper series. And Marcus preached a couple of weeks ago about walking with God. And um, we learned a little bit about that from the book of Ephesians. First, we learned that we have to sit at the feet of Jesus because of what he has done, not because of what we've done. We sit with him at the right hand of God and that is our place with him. And having learned to sit, the next thing is that we learn to walk with him. We learn to follow the path that he set out for us. And Ephesians chapter two, verse 10 says, we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared in advance that we should walk in them. God has set out a path for us and we can choose by the power of the Holy Spirit to walk on that path with him. We can choose to walk with Jesus. And that's an important part of growing in our faith and our discipleship. But what does all that mean today in the middle of this coronavirus? What's it mean to walk with Jesus when everything is so uncertain, when everything is so changed? Where is God in the middle of this? Where is God when we need him most? And that's a question many of us are asking, many people are asking, maybe many people have asked you, where is God when we need him most? Well, more than 3,000 years ago, the Israelites asked exactly the same question. They'd left Egypt, they'd had miracles, they'd left Egypt, they'd gone into the desert and they'd reached the sea. They'd reached against the sea and behind them, the most powerful army in the world was approaching and they were trapped between the army and the sea where could they go and they complained and they moaned they said what are we here for we're in trouble where is God when we need him most you can read the whole story in Exodus chapter 14 and you'll see they got to that point and they said where is God when we need him and Moses said to God show us your way and God made a way where there was no way he made a way through the sea. There was no way forward and God made a way. And you know, today, God promises exactly the same to you and to me. Have a read in Isaiah chapter 35. God promises that things will not always be like this. There will be a moment when he makes a way. He restores what has gone. And the things that we seem to have lost today will be restored. God will make a way. He says he'll make a highway called the way of holiness in Isaiah chapter 35 verse 8. The way of holiness. It says in Proverbs chapter 16 verse 9 that people make their plans but the Lord determines our steps. And if you go back to the 1st of January this year, nobody in government, nobody in armies, nobody in the world's biggest corporations knew where would we would be just three months later. In March 2020, the world is not where we thought we would be. People made their plans. Governments made their plans. Institutions made their plans. Maybe you as an individual made your plans. I made my plans. People make their plans, but the Lord 
determines our steps. But the great news is that if you look at Psalm 37 verses 23 and 24, again it says that God establishes our steps, but then it promises this. If we delight in God's way, even if we fall, we won't be lost. God will hold our hand. And that's a wonderful promise to remember this morning. Even if we fall, we won't be lost because God will hold our hand. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Proverbs chapter three, verse six. And this morning, whatever uncertainty we face, if we trust in him with all our heart, we don't lean on our own ability to think things through and understand things. If we acknowledge God first, then we know that he will direct our paths. We face uncertain times. The future is unknown for all of us. We watch ministers, prime ministers, governments from around the world on the television, but they don't know the future. But we know the one who holds the future and he promises to guide us with his hand. Let's walk with Jesus in confidence that he walks with us. Let's pray. Lord, thank you that you accepted me just where I was. You came to me. You didn't expect me to sort my life out and get myself right before you accepted me. Thank you that your grace for people like me is so beautiful and so transforming. Thank you that you see more in me than I do in myself. Thank you that you are willing to fashion me to shape me, to teach me, and to show me what being alive really means. Thank you that you have given me a new heart, a new life, and new eyes to see the world. Thank you that you paint the colours in my life with such hope. Forgive me when I can't believe it. Be patient with me when I lose sight of the wonder of your love. Help me to walk with you, and to learn that I will always stumble if I try to run ahead. Tune my spirit to the music of heaven. Write a symphony of grace with the notes of my life. Play the melody of grace through me so that others can hear the song of your love. Amen. Thank you, Graham, um, And thank you, everyone else, for joining in. We are almost at the end of, of our online Sunday celebration. Normally, we would say now, please stay a little longer and have some coffee and and biscuits at the back. But unfortunately, today you have to make your own coffee. Um, but what I would like to invite you to is that you then take a phone and that you call somebody from church, maybe from your life group, maybe somebody else, and um, yeah, and talk with them together about what we've just um, listened to. Um, I've put some questions that you might want to talk about in the description um, below this video and you can chat about these questions and you can just tell each other how you're doing and then I'd like to um, ask you if you could pray for each other so that no one is sitting on their own in their living room now but that we all can connect to one another and and pray with, with each other. Um, I really believe that you can't do faith on your own. Um, faith is always exercised in community and even if we are in different locations now, uh, we can connect now and, and, and pray together and encourage one another. And if you're watching this and you don't, you're not even part of our church or you're not even in Stafford and you still want to connect, you are very welcome to. So I put my details there as well. And then I'm, I'm help you to, to make some, some contact. And yeah, before, before we now finish here, I would also like to invite you to join in with our national day of prayer today many churches all over the country today will pray in our in our homes and what we want to do is at 7 p.m we all want to um, light a candle in our window so that people when they walk past on the street will see candles um, being lit and then we pray together for our for our country and that will happen all over the place in many, many thousands and thousands of homes. People will pray for, for England, will pray for our, for our planet, for people who are suffering and people who are afraid. And we believe that God can intervene and that 
God can turn, turn all this crisis around. So I invite you to pray with us. And now I hope you'll have a good rest of the Sunday and a good week. Speak to you soon.